Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ayeli Perez, a COPS Metro leader from St. Patrick Catholic Church. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Para los que necesitan traducción, favor de utilizar el botón ubicado en su pantalla con la imagen de un globo para escuchar la sesión en español por medio de nuestra traductora Susana Pimiento. We will be hearing from leaders in English and Spanish today. At this time, please select your language preference by clicking on the world icon located at the bottom right of your screen and selecting English or Spanish translation. Please turn on your cameras. We want to see you and please mute yourselves when not speaking. We are using Facebook Live to live stream this. If you want to share with your friends, please go to the COPS Metro Facebook page. The link will also be posted in the Zoom chat box. I don't see any language anywhere. Please take a moment to add your congregation or organization to the end of your name. You can do this by clicking on the three buttons on the upper right hand corner of the part of your screen with the, your picture and clicking rename. Please do that now if you haven't already. There are over 30 candidates with us today. When we get to that part of the agenda, we will break into three breakout rooms. You'll be automatically assigned to a breakout room based on the congregation or organization that you belong to. That is why it's important that you change your name now so that we can assign you to the correct breakout rooms and streamline that process. When we finish with the city council candidates in the breakout rooms, we will all come back together and hear from the mayoral candidates. Virtual clapping to recognize your leaders and acknowledge guests is encouraged. You can clap by hovering over the bottom of your Zoom screen. Click on the reactions button and clap away. However, we clap for candidates only if they are committed to support our agenda. Now, let's welcome our co-chairs. Good afternoon. My name is Yolanda Turner, a proud member of the Macedonia Baptist Church and a proud member of COPS Metro leadership. It's good to see all of you present. And for those of you who have blank screens, come on, let's see some videos out there and let's see those beautiful faces. Come join us so we can see you. We are here this afternoon for a COPS Metro accountability session with candidates for city council and SAISD. We will present our issues agenda to these candidates and give them the opportunity to publicly announce their position. This is not a session where we will be inundated with unrealistic political promises and campaign rhetoric. This is about our agenda and candidates' commitment to it. Now, it's my pleasure to turn this program to my co-chair. Thank you, Yolanda. My name is Sonia Rodriguez, COPS Metro leader from St. Margaret Mary's Catholic Church and co-chair of this accountability session. Para las personas que necesitan traducción, favor de oprimir el botón bajo de la pantalla que indica traducción. Please look now at the bottom of your screen where you will see a button that says translation. Please use that button to select your preferred language so that you can hear all of today's speakers. So select now English or Spanish. If you had not have not added your institution uh, to, to your name, um, please do so now. You can do this by clicking on the three buttons on the right-hand corner of your screen with your picture and clicking rename. Thank you, Sonia. 13 months ago, we were just beginning to experience the devastating effects of COVID-19. <clears throat> Little did we know that we would lose so many close to us, like COPS Metro leaders, Augustin Morta, of St. Leo and Olga Trevino of St. Margaret Mary. Mr. Mora and his wife Gloria were key leaders on the South Side. They spearheaded numerous projects to improve their community. Ms. Trevino was one of the first leaders from St. Margaret Mary. She fought tirelessly for her community. Nor could we foresee the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and too many others. 
We could not foresee the educational losses of our children, nor could we foresee a preventable power outage that killed too many and caused so much damage. This has been a rough year, yet here we are, ready to move forward. Pastor Mark Scrabach of First Unitarian Universalist Church, please lead us in a prayer for this year and the year to come. Thank you, Yolanda. I invite us all to bow our heads and hearts and join in prayer. Spirit of life and love, who we believe implants in each person the light of life. Turn our hearts and minds to the longing we share as we strive to live in love. We are humbled and grateful to witness the sacrifices made by many who served yeah. to hasten the coming of equity, peace, and justice. Inspired by their courageous examples, may we today renew our resolution for gathering together, which is to sincerely unite ourselves in our work, regardless of any kind of division which might separate us one from another. In this united and holy resolution, may we be strengthened knowing that we are members, each one of another, in you, the great spirit of life and love. May we today be blessed in our endeavors to ascertain accountability and direction toward the service of justice, mercy, grace, and peace in our very community. This is our prayer which we humbly and gratefully offer in the name of the holy source of our love. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Mark. Cops Metro leaders, are we ready for the roll call of Cops Metro institutions? Are we ready? One leader from each institution has been selected to present your delegation and your dues commitment for 2021. These dues commitment represent our ownership of this organization. It means that we own COPS Metro and that COPS Metro works for us. When your institution is called, let us know you're here. Good afternoon. My name's Beverly McClure and I'm a COPS Metro leader from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church. And I'm here with 45 other leaders St. Francis is so proud to increase our investment in COPS Metro leadership from $14,400 to $18,000 a year. Good afternoon. My name is Juan Elias, a COPS Metro leader from Divine Providence Parish. I am here with about 20 of our awesome parish leaders and our institution commits $1,500 investment on COPS Metro leadership. Hello, my name is Scott Emerson Price, a leader at First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio, and I'm here with about 30 leaders. Our institution commits to $7,200 investment in COPS Metro leadership, an increase of $350. Good afternoon, my name is Adrian Castro, and I am a leader with Our Lady of Guadalupe Helotes, and I am here with 20 passionate leaders and our institution commits to $15,000 of investment in COPS Metro leadership. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Claudia Pinales, líder de COPS y Metro y miembro de la Iglesia de Sagrado Corazón. ¡Yay! Para esta sesión estamos participando 54 personas y nuestra parroquia de Sagrado Corazón se compromete a aportar 2.500 dólares de inversión en este año. Good afternoon. My name is Valerie Hartfield. I'm a leader with Cops Metro from Holy Redeemer Catholic Church, Eastside San Antonio. I'm here with leaders. Our institution commits to $1,200 of investment on COPS Metro leadership. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hello, my name is Betty Rodriguez. I'm from St. Margaret Mary Catholic Church and I'm here with 26 leaders from our community. 
And St. Margaret Mary commits to $2,000 of investment to COPS Metro leadership. Hey. Hello, my name is Virginia Mata. I'm a leader of Holy Family Parish and we are here with six members from Holy Family. Our institution commits $1,200 of investment to COPS Metro leadership. This year for the West Side and Holy Family. Hello, this is Ana Maria de la Portilla with oh, St. Philip of Jesus. Yeah. I am here with about 12 leaders and some that are joining from our parish, including, uh, I'm sorry, from their homes, including our priest, Father Sean. He is here with us and we are committed to a thousand dollar investment to COPS Metro. Good afternoon, my name is Monica Munoz and I'm a COPS Metro leader with St. Patrick's Catholic Church on the east side. I am here with 40 talented and committed leaders. Our institution is raising our investment from $2,000 to $2,500 on COPS Metro leadership. Good afternoon, COPS Metro. My name is Luigi Luna, and I'm a COPS Metro leader at Our Lady of the Angels on the south side of San Antonio. Yay. We have 15 members, excited leaders in our hall and in our call today. Our institution commits to $2,000 investment in COPS Metro leadership. Go lay. Yeah. Buenas tardes. My name is Rose Garcia, leader with Our Lady of Guadalupe Shrine. I am here with 25 leaders from the heart of the West Side. Our institution commits to $1,000 of investment in COPS Metro leadership. Good afternoon. My name is Natalia Tovar. I am a leader of the St. Timothy Catholic Church, and I am here with 25 strong, dedicated leaders in the Corazon of the West Side. Our institution commits $3,000 of investment in COPS Metro leadership. I am Sister Anita Brennick. I'm here with the Sisters of Divine Providence at Our Lady of the Lake Convent. We have 47 sisters, associates, members, friends here with us. And we have, we sisters, Metro Leadership. Hi, I'm Sister Jean Durrell. I'm an Incarnate Word sister. I'm here with 17 sisters from our community. Um, and we are committing $5,000 of investment in COPS Metro leadership. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yes. I'm Sister Gabriella Lohan from the Holy Spirit Convent, and I'm here with 30 committed sisters, longtime leaders with cops in the Metro Alliance, and we too are from the beautiful East Side, and we bring $3,000 of investment to cops Metro leadership. Good afternoon. My name is Vincent Tarragin, cops Metro leader of Carmen Catholic Church, and I'm here with 20 Southside proud cops Metro leaders and Southside superintendent and staff. Our Institution commits to a $1,500 of investment on COPS Metro leadership. Yes. 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 Probably bringing up the rear. My name is Reverend Daryl Crumbs, COPS Metro of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, where love is intentional. We're here today with over 120 committed members. And today we not only come as members, we're also bringing over $5,200 uh, for the institution of COPS Metro's leadership. Yes. In Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis writes about the parable of the Good Samaritan that answers the question, who is my neighbor? He reflects on our individual and societal responsibility to the person lying wounded along the road. He writes, the decision to include or exclude those lying wounded along the roadside can serve as criterion for judging every economic, political, social, and religious project. The Good Samaritan chose to help the beaten man on the roadside. The religious leaders 
chose to ignore him. Like them, the mayor and the city council will have choices to make. What will they base their decisions on? Will they choose to help the wounded person or the robbers? Cops Metro leaders, we have decisions to make. Will we hold elected officials accountable and work to rebuild our, insti our institutions? Or will we let decisions be made by others <clears throat> and simply manage the decline of our communities? Will we be agents of change or passive bystanders like the religious leaders in the parable? Will we choose to put our children first in education or turn this into an adult fight that leaves our children out in the cold, sitting outside of a fast food restaurant, trying to access the internet? Yolanda, have we had enough of this? Sonia, we've had enough of having to teach our young people how to not get shot when they are stopped by the police. We have had enough of worrying every day if they will live to be adults. Have we had enough of the low wage and low skilled jobs that have kept our communities poor? We have had enough of good jobs going to other cities because of a lack of investment in our people. And have we had enough with a disgraceful mismanagement of the February power outage? We have had enough of people suffering and going their lives because of poor preparation at every level. You know, on the night before he died, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called for dangerous unselfishness. Speaking about the Good Samaritan, he stated that we need to stop asking, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? Instead, we must ask, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? We must not stand idly by and let elected officials cut deals at the expense of the person on the side of the road. Today, we all commit ourselves to our work, to our institutions, to our choices. And with the words of Pope Francis, each day we have to decide whether we are good Samaritans or indifferent bystanders. Let us care for the needs of every man and woman, young and old, with the same fraternal spirit of care and closeness that marked the Good Samaritan. With Pope Francis and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s words in mind, let us hear the stories of the wounded people along the roadside. And let us hear what needs to be done to make them whole again. Good afternoon. My name is Alicia Butler, and I'm a proud member of the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Every time I see a story about another Black person shot by the police, I think about my own children. Every new story brings a fresh wave of fear for those closest to me. Black families have long lived with this fear. With the increased publicity of police-involved shootings, Macedonia Baptist Church Youth and Social Justice Ministries are not only teaching our youth about the love of the Lord, but also how to exercise their rights under the law. Macedonia recently had a police chief and a judge speak to our youth and parents on how to safely exercise their constitutional rights. The judge, who was a former church member, taught our youth how to safely and effectively assert their fourth, fifth, and sixth constitutional rights. We must not stand idly by. This is just the beginning of our work to ensure that our children will not be killed. My name is Tiffany O'Neill and I'm a member of St. Patrick's Catholic Church on the Near East Side and the mother of a ninth grade Spitfire who goes to SAISD. We know that the road to true police reform is long, but there are clear steps that our community must take now to ensure transparency and accountability in policing. Did you know that the current police contract allows an arbitrator to go over the police chief's head and return fired police officers to the force? In fact, 67% 
of fired officers have been returned to our streets. This is one of the worst rates in the nation. We must change our city's policing contract to make sure that bad police can't avoid the chief's discipline. On the slide, you can see our proposed reforms. At the top is the one that's the most important. We must make sure that the, the only contract, the only contract that the mayor and city council will sign is one that eliminates an arbitrator's power to overturn the chief's discipline. In 2016, oh, good afternoon. My name is Rosa Rahulita Cheta, St. Phillips of Jesus, Cops and Metro Leader. In 2016, during the police contracts, the city council had an opportunity to make these same changes to the police contract, but they chose not to act in the best interest of us, the community. In the words of Martin Luther King, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. We will not be silent, but city council, your vote will determine if you continue to be silent. Angelica? Angelica no se escucha. Está en mudo. Sigue en mudo. No se oye. Perdón. Ahora sí. Mi nombre es Angélica Salazar, líder de COPS Metro, miembro del Sagrado Corazón y madre de familia de SISD. Yo soy una madre inmigrante de SISD y no fue fácil durante esta pandemia poder ayudar a mis hijos. Fue una crisis que nos afectó a nosotros los padres y a las familias, a mis hijos y a muchas familias, porque en nuestra ciudad no contamos con el internet y la tecnología adecuada y otras necesidades básicas en sus escuelas. Es por eso que estoy aquí para decirles que tengo cientos de familias del distrito escolar por medio de mi parroquia, por quienes vamos a votar basándonos en nuestros intereses y compartimos las mismas preocupaciones. Ahora es el momento de pedir lo que nos corresponde para una mejor educación de nuestros hijos que son el futuro de San Antonio. My name is Guadalupe Cornejo. I'm a COPS Metro leader here at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. My cousin Maria Guadalupe died of COVID-19 because of the February power outages. Maria was a young lady living in a group home. The power outages forced her to leave her safe place and go to another group home where she contracted COVID. She died a week later. She was the person in the story of the Good Samaritan that the robbers left lying on the roadside. Elected officials and business owners were the robbers. They decided that money was more important than my cousin's life. Profits were more important than weatherization. They robbed my cousin of her life. Today, I remind everyone, voters and candidates, that my cousin's death was preventable. As we move forward, our city and state must be prepared to respond to the next natural disaster. Our families should not pay high CPS bills to pay for the negligence and failure of the city and state. They made the decision to not weatherize our power grid. Voters, we cannot allow this to happen again. We must hold elected officials accountable to ensure that they make the decisions on our behalf. Good afternoon. My name is Sister Jane Ann Slater. I'm a Sister of Divine Providence and Chancellor of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. For years, San Antonio leaders have touted San Antonio 
as a low wage city to attract more low wage industries to come here. They wanted to keep wages low, but COPS Metro fought back to secure higher wages, the latest in November with the passage of Proposition B. Last September, we came together and committed ourselves to deliver 50,000 votes in support of Ready to Work San Antonio. We delivered those votes and 77% of the voters approved the measure. Great work, COPS Metro. Now that it has passed, we must work to ensure that the estimated $154 million in sales tax dollars is spent wisely. It would be so easy to waste the money on funding ineffective workforce development programs. We cannot let this happen. The city must do the following. First, it must train people for jobs that pay at least $20 an hour, offer benefits and a career track. Anything less than this means that we have accomplished nothing. Second, the city must provide solid wraparound services to participants to ensure that they receive the assistance they need to graduate. To be clear, saying that you have a food pantry is not wraparound services. Finally, the city must operate as a foundation that holds the funds and gives money to organizations with a proven track record of preparing people for high wage jobs. This is not the time to give out money to every organization who wants a piece of the pie. The investments must be wise and strategic. No newly hired bureaucracy. Now is the time to hear from the candidates for mayor, city council, and San Antonio ISD school board. Candidates, in the interest of time and given the large numbers of candidates with us today, you will be asked to commit to our issues agenda, which we have just presented. And you will be given 30 seconds each to speak about how you will work with COPS Metro to address these issues. Mayoral candidates will be given one minute. We ask each of you to avoid personal attacks, no electioneering, stick to the issues. All viable candidates have been invited to participate in this accountability session. Our timekeeper is Nayeli Perez. Nayeli? Uh, she will hold up a yellow card to indicate when you have 10 seconds left and a red card when you are out of time. We will mute you, by the way, if you continue talking after that. We'll begin first with candidates for the San Antonio ISD School Board. Good afternoon. My name is Joyce Hernandez Kelly, leader from First Unitarian Universalist Church and SAISD parent. SAISD candidates, I will read each of the questions in their entirety. When we're ready for your answers, I'll call your name. Candidates will be asked yes or no questions. After concluding the questions, candidates will have 30 seconds to explain how they'll work with COPS Metro on our agenda. Will you commit to the following? Ensure that COVID relief dollars sent to the district are put to maximum use to close learning gaps for students most affected by this disaster. Create and execute a, a strategic plan to make up for educational gaps due to COVID-19. Work with COPS Metro to ensure SAISD has a plan for engaging parents. Mr. Leshlow, please unmute yourself. You've heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro issues agenda? Yes or no? I commit to all three of the COPS Metro agenda items. Please share for 30 seconds how you'll work with COPS Metro to address our agenda. Yeah. COPS Metro is a critical conduit between the school district and the families and our students. 
Uh, COPS Metro provides a critical voice and critical access to so many of our families, especially those families who uh, have been disenfranchised and who don't uh, have a traditional access to, uh, to the power sources to make these decisions. I commit to engage with COPS Metro leaders to make sure that our messages are being received by the community and In time. receive your messages. Thank you. Mrs. Sorensen, please unmute yourself. You've heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro issues agenda, yes or no? Yes, I do. Please share for 30 seconds how you'll work with COPS Metro to address our agenda. Yes, I believe that it is important that the people who are most involved with our schools, the students, the school workers, and the families have a say in decision making in the district. And so I am running on a platform that centers student, school worker, and family voice, um, and am committed to making sure and partnering with organizations like COPS Metro to make sure that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Ozuna, please unmute yourself. You've heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro issues agenda, yes or no? Ms. Ozuna, are you in the meeting? We'll give her 30 seconds to respond and then we'll call time. Okay, Yadandi? We'll call her absent. It's been more than 30 seconds. Mrs. Vega, please unmute yourself. You've heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro Issues Agenda? Yes or no? Yes, I do commit to the COPS Metro Issues Agenda. Please share for 30 seconds how you'll work with COPS Metro to address our agenda. Yes, I look forward to working with COPS Metro to, adjust, to address um, a social justice agenda that is rooted in community and neighborhoods. I've worked for several years in several neighborhoods with different COPS Metro leaders and they, you know, your leadership as an organization is proven. You have a track, re track record of directly con connecting with people in neighborhoods who are most affected by all of our issues. And I would hope that we could form a, a beautiful relationship in terms of bringing and students and families into the fray. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Valdez, please unmute yourself. You heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro, Metro issues agenda, yes or no? Yes, I commit with the uh, COPS Metro agenda. Thank um, you. Please share for 30 seconds how you'll work with COPS Metro to address our agenda. SNID works with many effective partnerships, including COPS Metro, to engage parents and work together to ensure their input when implementation programs, implementing programs and strategies to improve the academic performance of our students. Thank you. Mr. Amflet, please unmute yourself. You've heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro issues agenda? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Please share for 30 seconds how you'll work with COPS Metro to address our agenda. Uh, so I think we need to close educational gaps as you all have outlined, but first we need to build emotional and mental health and safety among our students. Uh, we can't rebuild the academic structures that we need to rebuild before we take care of the physical, mental and emotional strain and trauma that has been uh, inflicted upon our communities during this time. So I'm completely committed to that and to making sure that the voices of students, educators, and community members, including those on this call, but also including those not on this call, are centered in every decision we make. Thank you. Mr. Garza, please unmute yourself. You've heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro issues agenda? Yes or no? Yes to all three. Please share for 30 seconds how you'll work with COPS Metro to address our agenda. I will continue to cultivate this powerful partnership between SEISD and COPS Metro Alliance, myself with the leadership as I did when I was a council member, mayor, and I will continue to do as a SEISD trustee. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Para Godina, please unmute yourself. You've heard our questions. Do you commit to the COPS Metro issues agenda, yes or no? 
Yes, to all three. Please share for 30 seconds how you'll work with COPS Metro to address our agenda. Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm very willing to uh, work with, um, with COPS Metro as a young Latina Mexican American woman. It's my responsibility to actively work to change the social conditions that contribute to inequalities in communities of color. And I'm committed to expanding student, family, community involvement with organizations that are most um, most impacted by policies and decisions to be part of decision making for our district and for all campuses. I'm going to be prioritizing academic excellence with the curriculum as well. Thank you. For the record, Ms. Ozuna did confirm to join us today, but had did not show up. In the interest of time, we will go into three breakout rooms now to hear the reactions of city council candidates. Then we will come back together for the mayoral candidates. Nayeli will now direct us on moving to breakout rooms. Each room will follow the same format and will discuss the same issues as have been presented here. Nayeli? Most of, oh, most of you have already been assigned to a room and will now be prompted to join please do that now. If you haven't been assigned to a room, please select a breakout room. If you're on a computer, you can select the breakout room icon located at the bottom center of your screen. If you're joining us on mobile, please click the icon that should be located at the top left of your screen. Once you click that icon, you will see a group different breakout rooms, three different breakout rooms, and you can hover over the top, over the, the right side of each room and click join. Let's hear the reports now for each of the groups. We'll be hearing from Reverend Daryl Crooms, Rose Garcia, and Arturo Rodriguez. Reverend Crooms. The, re the report that I have from the breakout session in regards to uh, the issues, COPS Metro issues, we had yes from candidates out of District 1, four, six, seven, all candidates. District 10, we had yes from Representative Johnson. Mr. Perry was a no-show. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. My name is Rose Garcia. And these candidates have all agreed to the COPS Metro agenda, District 5. Just unmute, unmute yourself. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Arturo Rodriguez and from District 3, Ms. Villagran, Mr. Vargas and Mr. Martinez all supported COPS, voted yes. And Mr. Uresti was a no-show. For District Council 3, um, those that supported the COPS agenda were Mr. McKee Rodriguez uh, and Mr. Darden. Ms. Andrew Sullivan and Ms. Villanueva and Mr. Dawkins were no-shows. That was District 2. I'm sorry, I apologize, District 2. Thank you. I'm sorry, because that confused me. Could you please repeat that for District 2 again? Yes, District 2, the candidates McKee Rodriguez was yes on supporting COPS Metro agenda, as well as Mr. Darden also. And the candidates that were no-shows was Ms. Andrew Sullivan, Ms. Villanueva, and Mr. Dawkins. Yolanda, you're muted. I'm so sorry. Now I would like to call on Ms. Renee Oden from Macedonia Baptist Church to begin with the mayoral candidates. 
Good afternoon, Mayor Nuremberg. You have heard the full questions. In the interest of time, we will shorten the questions. Will you commit to only voting in support of a police contract that does the following? Ensures that the chief can hold officers accountable, eliminates the 48 hour preparation period, ensures that the 180 day timeline begins when an officer's supervisor learns of the offense, ensures that past offenses can be introduced as evidence in discipline investigations. On the topic of education, will you commit to ensuring that Southside South ISD is brought into the broadband program? Will you commit to ensure that Ready to Work essay does the following? Place participants in jobs that pay at least $20 per hour, provide wraparound services, structure the program to look like a foundation. Regarding the power outage, will you commit to ensuring that the CPS and SAWS costs will be equitably divided between residential wow. customers and businesses? Will you ensure weatherization on Prop A? Will you support bond funding for the rehab of owner-occupied housing? You have one minute to explain how you plan to work with COPS Metro on our agenda. Well, thank you for having me and yes on the COPS Metro agenda. Uh, first on the subject of police. I was not silent when I had the chance in 2016. I am not silent on this agenda as we're currently bargaining and I will not be silent if we have a contract that falls short. On the subject of workforce, I was very proud to work with COPS Metro on assembling the ready to work program. It is our greatest generational opportunity to uh, turn back cycles of generational poverty and turn this once low wage town into one that is equitable for all people. On the subject of power, I will support uh, the independent investigation that's underway and we will implement the recommendations so to make sure that we don't find ourselves in this situation ever again. And we will exhaust every avenue to make sure that the people in our community who have been suffering through this crisis are not also bearing the costs and the burden of it. Finally, on the subject of housing, uh, absolutely. It was one of the great honors of my life to lead uh, the development and ratification of an affordable housing framework that is comprehensive and compassionate. And we will also lead the way as we currently are underway with implementation of that framework. Uh, so I'm very proud and grateful uh, of the partnership with COPS Metro. As I've said many times, powerful things happen in this community when the mayor's office and COPS Metro are partnered together. And I look forward to advancing our partnership. Thank you. Hobbs Metro leaders met with candidate Greg Brockhouse on April the 5th. At that time, he committed to join us for this meeting. But this morning, he sent an email to us. He has chosen not to show up, even though he's known of this meeting for weeks. We will let candidate Brockhouse's actions speak for themselves. Thank you. Metro leaders, you have heard where the candidates stand on our issues. We know who is with us and who is not. Please vote accordingly and tell your friends. Early voting starts tomorrow and Saturday, May 1st is election day. Reverend Daly, would you please take us home? You're muted, Pastor. Can you hear me? We can hear you now, sir. 
All right, thank you so very much. Uh, let me say, first of all, I'm proud to be a leader with Thompson Metro and especially proud to be the pastor of the Macedonia Baptist Church. My friends, we've come to the end of another accountability session. But not only have we come to the end of this accountability session, I believe that we've come to the end with a determined resolve. We've come to the end with a laser focus and an unrelenting commitment. We've heard from the candidates, and yes, we've even heard from those who didn't show up. But more important than that, I hope and pray that the candidates heard from us. I hope that they heard from our track record that we speak truth to power. I hope that they heard that when we commit to something, we're not going to let anything turn us around. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Guess what organizations begin to end when they become silent about things that matter. So I say to our candidates that showed up, cops and Metro will not end because we will not be silent will not be silent on police reform, it matters. Will not be silent on education, it matters. Will not be silent on electricity, will not be silent on ready to work San Antonio. We heard what you said, but we want you to know we keep a record of what you do. John Lewis said, if you see something that isn't right, see something not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation to do something about it. And I believe that you know that we hold you accountable and we expect you to do something about what you said here today. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hand, oh, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. We ask these blessings in the name that is still above every name, the name that has power and all power. We ask these blessings and all of God's people said, amen. 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 Thank, you. Amen. Thank you very amen. much, Reverend Daly. Amen. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, COPS leaders for another successful accountability session. Leaders, please stick around for the evaluation. Bye, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, everybody. See you at the polls. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.